let's get started. Welcome, folks. This is the OKD Working Group meeting for July 5th of the year 2025. And uh, I've uh, dropped the agenda in the chat. I'll drop it one more time for folks that have uh, just come in. And feel free to take 30 seconds to look it over. Let me know if there's anything that's been missed uh, that you would like added, moved around, or anything like that. Did I say 2025? Oh, you're just, 2022. You're just yes. getting ahead of yourself. I am. I'm optimistic about the longevity of OKD. Absolutely. Good thing to be optimistic about. Open source code lives on forever. Uh, so okay. <clears throat> the agenda mentions uh, CentOS Stream Core OS from updates from Timothy, but he's not here, so I don't know if somebody else can speak to that or if we should nix it from the agenda. Yeah, um, Christian, unless you have anything in that regard, uh, we can uh, uh, hold off until the next meeting. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've got no updates so far. Um, Luigi has been, we they're still semi on track for the end of July, is basically all I, the only update I have. So we probably need a little bit more time uh, because there are, and, and Timothy is probably the best person to to uh, talk about this, but there are a couple of blockers um, on on the CarOS side, which Timothy uh, has now is now leading, um, which is great to have him uh, in, in in working group as well. Uh, but yeah, there might be a little bit uh, more time we need for that. I'm not sure if we make uh, we, we certainly won't make uh, mid July, maybe end of July, but August. All right, uh, then let's move into uh, OKD release updates with Christian. So again, I don't really have a lot to say about this. I was out last week, uh, but there is a new release from the uh, 24th of June. Um, I haven't been following through with any issue on that though. Uh, so if you have any, uh, please make sure to uh, to file them. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, not specifically about the current release, but in general, we have a uh, a Jira board now uh, for OKD on the Red Hat uh, Jira instance, and it should be public. Um, I think all the cards on on there are public at the moment, so you should be able to use that to track things. Um, there is this broader plan to move to Jira from Bugzilla eventually. I don't know what, how far along that is, but we'll be using Jira more and more to track things. And I think there will also be the option to, to actually file cards uh, yourself um, from, from an external uh, standpoint uh, in the future too. So if, yeah, j just uh, wanna throw the link in here uh, if you're interested in following. Uh, with what we're doing internally, um, that is the, the Kanban board um, for our current issues there. Yeah, and Brian. that's it for me. If, oh, Brian, please. Yeah, I'm just going to ask, is it okay to put this into OKD.io, or is that, do you not want it that public yet? It is public. I don't know what, what management wants, but it is public, so feel free to advertise it. Okay, can you show, can you throw it in chat? So I've just got the correct link, please. And it's... And can you show, throw a link as well, Christian, to the latest release and I can OKDIO Twitter post it while we're here. Thanks. I think we've now, before it was that we usually did the release just before the OKD working group meeting, and now we do it in the alternating week. So it's again nine days ago. Um, yeah, I'm, I, maybe we can uh, in the future, because in the future we'll, uh, at least for S cost, we'll move to a sprintly release, uh, which is every three weeks. Currently we have this every two weeks. 
we might uh, align that with the FCOS release as well in the future. Um, and then we'll just have uh, a release every three weeks. I don't think I want to. I want to ask Vadim to change his cadence at the moment. Um, so for, for now, this will just be uh, the way it is. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. Any other questions for Christian? Okay. And I'll just have one comment for Christian to say um, thank you for doing the Dublin event. Um, and the video is up. It's unlist. It's unlisted it's the public and I, will, I will share the link with um everybody here in a few seconds um and brian innes we could put a little blog post with that video embedded in it of his talk on the that that you and he did on that so thank you both for for doing that in dublin that was an absolute pleasure um and it was great meeting you brian um really cool yeah Likewise. All right, let's move on now to um, FCOS updates, which Dusty says there are none, so we can skip uh, ahead. Any, any questions for Dusty, actually, or any feedback on FCOS stuff uh, while we're here? Yep, open, open for questions if anybody has any. <clears throat> Um, Dusty, I have one question, but it might not be, it might be for Timothy, actually. Uh, one of the blockers for SCOS is um, the lack of a couple of RPMs, namely Cryo, I think Cryo Tools, and I think those are the only ones that aren't actually built from, from OpenShift code. Um, oh, that might be, there might be one that is from the fast data path repository. Do you have any uh, any idea how these RPMs are going to be built for CentOS Stream, and or if um, anyone can help uh, expedite this? I'm, I'd be happy to uh, to reach out to to the maintainers and help them set up builds for for CentOS Stream. Uh, but if you don't know that, that's totally fine as well. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm I'm not a clue put in on CentOS Stream Core OS stuff at all. So don't I'm not quite sure there. Okay, no worries. All right. Let's now move on then to our uh, if whoever has the click uh, keyboard could mute yourself, that'd be fantastic. Uh, let's move on now to documentation subgroup updates with Brian. Okay, so last week we had quite an interesting um, discussion. Um, so technical documentation, um, we're gonna sort of um, look to do a couple of tidy up things there. So one of them is with the guides. Um, we actually wanna work out what a guide is because um, what we've got down currently is guides on more example setups. So I think we're gonna turn them more into blog entries. And then we are gonna be looking at what the strategy is for creating guides. Um, where do we want them? Who, who do we wanna create them? And what should they contain? Create a template and, and have some standard guides in terms of how people on board with that. Um, <clears throat> we're talking about the repo move. And as soon as we line up the Red Hat necessary resources that can actually do the DNS updates, we will be looking to actually move the OpenShift slash OKD and the OpenShift CS, OKD.io repos into the OKD or the project OKD GitHub repo. So we're actually moving them outside the OpenShift repos so the community can take um, greater ownership of those without sort of stepping on Red Hat internal um, requirements. Um, um, we also had the initial discussion around how we want to onboard CentOS if the community decide that we want to take that on as an ongoing distribution. Um, and the other thing we talked about was the technical documentation. So I've been trying to get some technical documentation together um, and, and falling over a number of issues in terms of where things aren't quite as clear as they want to be. And I notice, um, there was an item put in 
from Jack, and yes, we, we, we are, we are going to cover that hopefully as a, a discussion today. And it's really about how we enable the community to be more active, to build and customize, um, and also the possibility of the community building an OKD operator catalog. Um, we've been talking to Red Hat engineers for several months about this, but they never seems to get to the top of their to-do list. So um, there are quite a few active community members who want this to happen. So if we un un sort of cork the ability to build, um, we should allow the community to actually build that catalog with the project OKD Git repo. So we had quite a conversation around there, and I want to pick up on those in, later in the meeting. Um, so I'll stop there. Any questions? If not, I'll hand it back to Jamie. And a, a couple other things are that it's specifically some of the the posts or the things that were guides that are getting moved to blog posts are um, uh, the um, home lab guides uh, from Shri and Vadim. Both of those were sort of their individual, individual just descriptions of Homeland, which weren't really guides, right? Because they didn't really explain like how to follow a process or anything like that, installation or day two or anything like that. Um, so those are the ones that are going to get moved to blog posts. Um, Jack has agreed to provide a blog post on what they've been doing. Uh, yeah, Diane. I'm not, when you're done, I just... I, couldn't okay. figure, I can't find the raise your hand button here, and I think I'm just Zoom trained. <laughs> uh, uh, so Jack has volunteered to write a blog post about what they're doing at CERN uh, with OKD and sort of give us the basics of how they're putting things together. Um, Glenn Marcy, who you've probably noticed in the Slack channel, has been doing a lot for SNO um, and is going to be doing a blog post for us to help describe some basics of getting OKD SNO up. Uh, and um, one other one coming up. Someone else is doing a blog post as well. So we're actually going to start building content uh, that's going to be available as blog posts, and I think that that's going to pull in a lot of people. And one other thing from the documents, documentation subgroup that wasn't mentioned is uh, Diane did reach out to Red Hat to get details on modifying the MX records of the OKD IO website so that we can actually manage our own email and start creating some email addresses specific to okd.io um, which would be helpful for a lot of stuff like twitter and things like that so okay diane i found the, the hand raising thank you for your hints in the chat um two things about the mx um I, I did make the request for that to get that to change so that we can have an okd.io um, that legal is reviewing it. You do have one, I, and Dusty and everybody else can for, for Fedora. Um, so I don't think it'll be a problem, but um, before the infrastructure people will do anything, they need to have um, legal, but the, the request is in for that. Um, on the hackathon on creating our own operator registry, um, there's a gentleman at Red Hat, Austin McDonald. Some of you may know him. Um, he's kind of the community lead architect for um, operator SDKs and operator framework. Um, and he, I asked him if he would be willing to um, jointly do that, um, bring in someone to talk about OLM, explain maybe a little intro and hop in on that. And he's totally game. What I would like to do, Brian, is connect you and him together because you had a hit list of ones you wanted to get done and um, have a good sense of what would need to be the setup for the day, so if the two of you could get together, what I'd like that hackathon to be once you guys figure out that is something that brings the operator framework community to the OKD community um, to help us do that work. And maybe um, some of, and if we know the, the, I think you had five or six operators that you were keen to get, um, and that's, you can be selfish here, because you know, you're gonna help drive this. Um, then maybe find the people who wrote those operators at Red Hat or elsewhere um, and invite them to come and be the ones in the room helping us hack on that um, and just get some engagement there. And if I would, the other thing I was going to say is if the um, OKD um, uh, CentOS stream core OS thing is going to get delayed, maybe we should do this in 
in August. Um, and um, use August, everybody's vacation month all over Europe, um, but use August as a hackathon op opportunity and, and start, because I'm after tomorrow, where Brian is talking for us in London at the gathering, um, I don't have any events uh, that I have to host um, and organize. Um, so I could do something in August uh, if people are willing for that. So I'm gonna let, hook Brian up with Austin, just do a mind meld and then we'll move it forward at the next meeting. Go ahead, Christian, I'll lower my hand. Um, just a very quick mention, we here at Red Hat are in the OpenShift arc, we have a, is it hack week or shift week next week, uh, meaning we'll be given some free time to work on the things we want to work on personally, essentially. In so we were thinking this might be an opportunity, um, you know, to motivate Red Hatters to help with uh, the operator building. Um, since with SCOS, this is very much with the CoreOS team, we can't expedite that, that really. Um, but on the operator side, we can really do, uh, do a lot already. So if you have any specific operator you, you want to build and you maybe already know or no a person that maintains that or please reach out to them and uh, ask them whether they uh, have time next week uh, and tell them, oh, come on, you have shift week. Um, so, um, so please uh, reach out to them and reach out to us too. We can, we can help uh, organize meetings for specific operators. Okay, Christian, I mean, one project that if there's people looking for work to do, which obviously when, hopefully when Brian speaks, we can tie this together is, ideally I want this to be done in the project um, OKD Git repo. And I want it so it, it builds on OKD with Tekton pipelines and GitOps. So it's totally outside of Red Hat's internal system. So the community can actually do it on their own clusters. So we need that infrastructure define, sort it out, whatever. So again, that, that's something that, yeah. that I was hoping that the hack would do, but um, if there's people looking for work to do next week on free time. Yeah, so uh, regarding the, the infrastructure we want to use, I think there are two options. We could either use GitHub Actions and just kind of use GitHub infrastructure for this, or we use the Operate First Cloud, which will leverage for, for more things Feature as well, like an update graph and proper Cincinnati instance and things like that. But this would be the place where we could possibly deploy Tekton um, and even just an OKD cluster essentially for this working group that we will then maintain and own ourselves. Um, so yeah, I think that might be uh, a good a good starting point. And depending on what you want to do, uh, GitHub Actions might be the way of least resistance here, but I think eventually having properly defined uh, tectile pipelines for, for this is is preferable. So, yeah, I, I can I think uh, I can help uh, help you set up a meeting with the operate first guys because they will need to know you and they will need to know what you want to do and then they will deploy a cluster and hand you the keys to the kingdom essentially if if there's interest. So I'm just going to raise my hand I'm going to and try and, and, and be let be quick and succinct. So Brian, if you can write up that list of operators that you were looking for and send them to Christian and I, I don't think Brian has the ability to target the people who are on the shift week, the hack week next week. So if you can, you and maybe, and, and CC Austin McDonald to Christian and make that connection because that is, use that time. Um, and you know it'd be, it'd be lovely if we got a few of them done in advance. Excellent, excellent. I want to keep things moving along because we do have a guest, and I want to make sure that we get to actually have multiple guests things to talk about. So let's now hand it over to Brian Cook uh, to uh, talk about um, the uh, build software and the Red Hat hybrid application cloud. Brian Cook, take it away. <coughs> yeah, thanks. Um, so this, maybe this is related to the previous conversation. I, I wasn't quite catching the context there, but, um, so I think 
if I was right, there might be a third option for you for doing some of these builds. So I am a I'm a product manager at Red Hat. Um, in so primarily in the past, I have worked on our internal container build infrastructure, and um, we have put together a team to rebuild some of our well, pretty much all of our container build infrastructure in a way that allows us to build um, secure containerized software in a managed service for Red Hat to be able to ship to customers, but also in a way that customers can sign up and use that very same infrastructure, that very same managed service in order to build their own software. And um, we have tried to be very, very thoughtful in how we design it so that it would scale from very small projects up to very large projects. And in fact, OpenShift is the project that we used for our large project um, builds. And so we have you know, done a lot of investigation on like how the OpenShift build process works today and how we could generalize it to work for things besides OpenShift, but also one day onboard OpenShift our service. Um, and to that, to that effect, we have like a very kind of specialized QE controller, which handles a lot of this stuff and might make your job a lot easier. And in fact, under the hood, we implement Tekton pipelines um, and we allow you to get, uh, we basically provision opinionated Tekton pipelines for you um, that get sent to your, your Git repo as a pull request. And then you would merge it and after merging it, you're able to modify it. Um, but once you modify it, um, your, what we call a tenant. So like if you guys would do this, you would have your own tenant and you have tenant policies that can um, put restrictions on how you're able to modify things. You can always modify it however you want, but the restriction comes in when you. Um, so for example, if you wanted to do like the kinds of things that we do with OpenShift, um, you have to do all of your builds in a network disconnected hermetic environment, right? And so you could um, you could remove that step from your pipeline, but if that policy is in effect for your tenant, it would the build would be successful. You could test it, you could run it um, in a like a staging environment, but you wouldn't be able to release it because your tenant policy would prevent that. So our goal is to allow um, people like yourselves. Uh, who are community folks or people who are our customers to be able to use this service to build Salsa level four uh, compliant software and to be able to generate um, provenance for those builds using chains um, and yeah, be able to write uh, also custom policies besides Salsa in order to put guardrails around what you want to be allowed to be released. So Diane and I were talking about this um, off to the side a while back and she mentioned for a new home to build your software and um, what we're working on might be a really good fit for you and it might be a really interesting test for us and I think a challenge, a nice challenge for us to try to prove that, um, that we can scale to those things that we kind of designed for on paper already. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to see where it would go. So if folks have, have questions about that, I think my primary first ask is of this group is that will be, you'll have to sign on with your Red Hat ID to interact with it. I, that was what I was remembering from this conversation, which happened like a couple of months ago. It wasn't something that it was totally open. So if you could explain that, or maybe that's changed a little bit. It's a managed service. So we would, we would provision you um, like a tenant, like I said, in a, in a managed service. Um, and you would have to sign on with some Red Hat SSO enabled ID. That's correct. Um, I, I think that's about the only kind of restriction around it. Um, we'll be using compute from various clouds that's connected to it. So we'll be able to like connect Amazon clusters uh, via KCP in order to provide places for testing and uh, compute and stuff like that. I think the, the, the major, the, the thing that I think is gonna help you out the most knowing, you know, what I know about how we build OpenShift is that um, 
if you are wanting to integ integrate, like run integration tests against these OKD builds with its 100 plus containers. We have done a lot of design engineering around making that possible in a generalizable way where um, OpenShift has spent an enormous amount of resources making that efficient in a very specific way. And for you guys to go and recreate all that in like GitHub Actions is, is going to be quite a lot of work. <laughs> I, I think one of the challenges that as a community we face is that there's quite a lot of the build that happens sort of behind closed doors where the learning curve to understand some of the transformations that Prow does. So for example, when you look at the Docker file in a, in a Git repo, the from is not what's actually used to build because there's a whole series of Prow transformations. So trying to work out what is actually built is a bit of a nightmare for us because of a lot of the images that get used just within the repos are within the Red Hat firewall. So I think that's where a lot of the community have found problems is we we're not we don't know how to create an equivalent build that produces what the internal system has. So will this overcome that or will we still face the the challenge where bits of it will run within the firewall and there's sort of dark areas of the process that we just can't get access to. So this will not be this will be completely transparent to you. Now what I what it what it will not solve is like it won't it won't make the open shift builds completely transparent to you, but these builds will be completely they will be your builds completely transparent to you. We will still have to figure out how to build those images in in your pipelines, right? So there may still be some like we have to figure out how those transformations work in order to put them in these pipelines. But once they're in there, they're your pipelines. There's nothing hidden from you there. Um I don't know, I don't I don't want to promise this and you know, but I would say that if it's down to like trying to build OpenShift OKD on like GitHub Actions or like say the Operate First Cloud versus um, this, we might get more interest from the OpenShift engineering team because this will be a future target for them building on it. So for them, they might be interested in proving that OKD can build at scale efficiently and reliably on this as a precursor to them moving to it. Whereas, you know, um, you guys going to like operate first probably wouldn't be that interesting to them because they know they would never really open ship builds to operate first. Yeah, and, and I, in, uh, that I, I was the conversation. You had two other small projects ahead of us that you were testing with. Um, I forget exactly which ones they were, but it was something yeah. um, that you would, it, it sounded like early September-ish, you might be freed up to be available to work with us on something around OKD on FCOS um, for, for that um, service. Is that still the time frame you're looking at or is it further out than that? It's, it's, I think it's still possible to start then, just to be completely transparent with you guys. You'd be like kind of on our bleeding edge, but that might be kind of fun. Um, <laughs> But our, we are planning to onboard our first customers at, at the end of August, that's true, and that will be KCP and the um, API Curio service registry service. Um, so we have support for building uh, Golang. Full, I would say we can build anything, but we have these like very sort of starter, uh, nice starter pipeline templates for Golang and Java. Um, and we'll be following up with Python and NPM right after that. So I think some of the NPM stuff might be necessary for some of the OpenShift images. So we would want to prioritize that. But we could we could certainly start um, bringing a few images in and letting you guys kick tires and understand how things work in order to you know kind of make a further decision. I think. Is so, uh, Jamie. Maybe this would take a pause. Is to me, this sounds really as a viable option, um, more viable than um, like GitHub, Git, GitHub Actions, you could do, we could do that. Operate first, um, there, it seems a little theoretical and not a lot of resources. 
available to us to do that. So this was the third option I wanted to bring to the table um, and see if it was amenable to the group um, to do something with Brian Cook's team um, around getting a community build service going. So I'll... Yeah, and I think that... Um... Well, let me, let's do a quick straw poll uh, real quick. And Christian, I saw your hand real quick. So straw poll, um, I'll just go across my screen. Bruce, what, how does this sound to you? What are your thoughts? I'm trying to find my unmute button. Uh, no, this sounds really interesting. Um, the, uh, I, I guess the boundary is an interesting question because uh, we've got, uh, you know, sort of rebuilding OKD from scratch, which is technically interesting, but in the end doesn't give you any additional capabilities because it's already being built for us. Um, and then you've got the delta between OKD and OCP. Um, you know, so the, the uh, you know, serverless, uh, you know, Red Hat pipelines, Red Hat serverless, uh, what else? What, I forget what they call, oh, Red Hat service mesh. Uh, and uh, that's an area where we're actually lacking. Uh, so if, if it, uh, I, I would like to, you know, push beyond just OKD as it currently exists. But whether or not it ever got to there, it doesn't really matter. You got to get started. Uh, so that sounds interesting to me. Okay, Brian, what do you think? Brian Ennis. Um. <laughs> I think it sounds a really, really good option. And especially if this is where Red Hat's going, um, if we can stay sort of in sync with Red Hat. Um, my primary driver is, as you say, it's the bits that probably we need to figure out no matter which way we go. It's like, how do we do the prow stuff that's sort of hidden in the open? And, and get that figured out. So I think we're going to have to do that whichever way we do it, whether it's actions, the first cloud, or whether it's this, we, that's going to be the challenge. Um, but if we're going to use the same pipelines that Red Hat OpenShift will eventually take on, I think that's goodness. Um, let's not diverge if we don't have to. Okay, and uh, Mohammed, what are your thoughts? Um, and if you don't have any particular thoughts, that's fine too. You can just say pass. Dropped his voice, so. Yeah. Mohammed, we don't hear you. Let's, uh, Carl Miko. Mike, what do you think? So, um, I tend to agree with, uh, you know, Brian Ennis. Um, I think it'd be really cool for us to set up, like, I unfortunately, I think we're going to need to bite the bullet, and we're probably going to need to have community members who build up some prow experience and understand how to operate it for us. I, I ultimately kind of agree that, you know, we need to set up our own CI infrastructure. And if, and if that just looks like it's a copy of what Red Hat is running internally to begin with, like, I think that's okay. But like, ultimately, if we wanna be able to do like true experimentation in the OKD like community and be able to really like innovate in a direction that like is out in front of OCP, I think that we need to own enough of the process so that we have community members who understand it's like how to do things like okay we want to we want to build a fork of okd that does x y and z how do we set that up and get all the pipelines created like the okd community needs to own that knowledge because otherwise we're always going to be dependent on going back to red hat to understand like how do we set this stuff up so like unfortunately we're probably going to have to bite the bullet and skill up and get some community members who can run prow and who, who know what you know tide is and understand boscos and these other things um, but I think we'll be in a really good place at the end of that because then we'll be able to do the kind of experimentation we want to do where we say, like, you know, let's try out a process that Red Hat is not using yet or maybe will never use and see how it works. And then we can, like, really kind of experiment with stuff. So that that's my feeling. Okay, great. And, uh, Diane, we know sort of what you feel uh, since you've 
chimed in. Uh, Alessandro, uh, a guest here, did you have any thoughts? I agree with what Amigo was saying, I'd say, um, and it's challenging to test other ways of te of building an new CI pattern, I'd say. Uh, one concern that I shared with Al Forts um, in the past meetings is about uh, future possibilities of building uh, OKD for ARM and also heterogeneous, the heterogeneous version that will be shipped um, in a while. But yeah, so uh, the heterogeneous stuff will be easier, uh, could be easier with uh, Tecton or even other CI ways, CI tools. Uh, but the, uh, the ARM stuff will probably need infrastructure and so this will need to be achieved some eventually, I'd say. Great, thank you, Alessandro. Uh, we have someone, Chuba, who drops in, but I don't know that we've ever heard anything from, from Chuba. you have any thoughts on this question? Okay, uh, Christoph. Uh, nothing to add, no. Okay, Jack. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. So actually, I'm, I mainly agree with, with Bruce. So like, it wouldn't really add much for, for our use case, though it would be a nice to have because you would be able to see how a OPD release actually happens. So now we get these things uh, that are getting dropped uh, by Vadim on the OKD release, uh, like uh, releases page, which is great and everything, but we don't really see what goes into it. And maybe we can figure out how some of the images are built but it's definitely not a transparent process. But uh, at least from, from my point of view, like the this kind of transparency would also just be satisfied with some documentation or, or scripting or something like this. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a full blown CI, but then some, some maybe looking into some of the currently still closed source or, or closed binary operators, maybe that would be an interesting take uh, to, to figure out how we can build those ourselves. All right, excellent. Did I miss anybody? I've been kind of trying to get me. Uh, Christian, you you said no. Okay, go ahead, Christian. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, just uh, to what Jack just said, it's all open source. I think the problem is just that it's hard to reproduce because with the prowl system we currently have, it's very obscure. It is all in the open, but you have to know where to look, and it's it's really yeah. not easy. I, I, I tried putting air quotes around the, the closed source. I know yeah. it's not closed um, source, but it's like, yeah, you, you, you get a block yeah, idea. I, I, but no. I, I know exactly what you mean. And I um, I, I just want to make sure, I, I'm all for, uh, for trying um, this new build system. I think that sounds really exciting, especially if there's multi-arch support already planned as well. Um, I think we should definitely try that, but I, I do have the concern that it doesn't improve the situation in regards to our kind of the, the vendor lock in with Red Hat that we currently have, which obviously um, we, we might not lose if we move from one very obscure system like Pro to another one that isn't, that you just can't just deploy yourself. The, ideally, which is why we were talking about Tecton so much, is you have a a Tecton pipeline, and you can deploy that pipeline anywhere on any Kubernetes cluster. You don't need a Red Hat service. You don't need uh, any special version of Tecton or anything. If we can make it so that the Red Hat service, this new uh, build service that Brian um, has presented, is able to kind of consume something like a standard Tecton pipeline or something in a format that a normal Tecton pipeline could also consume. It then, is the I, same. then I see absolutely no reason not to do it. I think if we, if it's just kind of a hosted Tecton, uh, Tecton as a service, it's, then we should. Yeah. yeah, let me like give you a few more details, but it, it is, it is Tecton specifically, it's OpenShift pipelines, right? Uh, but the, the reason why it's managed service um, one is there's a lot of pieces to integrate in order for us to get people where we want to get. Like our goal 
is to be able to have somebody be able to create salsa level four compliant software in like 15 minutes from a from a repo that we can build right so to that effect we have very like we have these pipeline templates that we think should work for you know language specific so we will give you a golang template and it has all these tasks already seeded in it for how to do uh, SAS T with GoStack, GoStack and scan with Claire. Um, it can produce pipeline level attestations that get stored as OCI artifacts that are signed um, and, and all the things that are necessary for salsa level four so, uh, compliance, right? And so in order for you to wire that all together yourself, it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, so we had, a, we had a solution architect try to go do it and it's like crazy. So. Uh, we do like our long term goal is that we would have a, a on prem installable product. It will require us to build an operator that can like do all this and deploy it. And at that point, that would become an open source thing. And there would be open source version of this operator. And then if you guys wanted to like remove yourselves from our managed service, you could go deploy that operator wherever you wanted to, like pick up your stuff and, and move it. But for now, the most expedient way for us to get this to be available and kind of develop it now is for us to run it as a managed service. Um, and our user interface is built into hack, which is part of the hybrid application, like console dot open shift experience. So for, for, I just want to be like, as honest, I'm going to guess like for the next two years, you probably are stuck with a managed service, right? And as we iterate on that, but we, we definitely, understand there's a desire especially for people who want this stuff a lot of times want to run in a disconnected environment so there's a mismatch there right we know that so we want to make this available for those people that are running in um, air-gapped environments as well but it's just it's not yet you can try it this way and i think it'll give you a, a massive sort of head start on on where you want to go and then maybe you like it and you stay with it Maybe you want to run it yourself later, and when that becomes available, you do. But there, there won't be anything that's sort of in the mix here that's like special. It's Tecton and Tecton results and chains uh, and cosine and sig store project and you know all all that stuff. So. All right, I want to be mindful of uh, our other topics uh, and our guests who are going to be discussing them. Uh, Brian, what would be our next steps if we wanted to move forward? Uh, next steps, I think, would be for us to gather up a um, list of people we would want to get access to an initial workspace when we when we would onboard. And then, uh, like Diane said, it'll be a little while, so it'll likely be at least September. But um, we would have that list, and we'd create a workspace. Like you go, you folks should pick a subset of images that you might want to use as a uh, like a test projects, right? Like pick a few images that you know how to build, maybe that you know how to test as well. Um, maybe if you can find ones that can sort of be built and run and tested without building all of OpenShift, that would be nice. So you can just have a few images and you can say, okay, that's this is the scope of how we're gonna evaluate if this is what we want to use. And then we can, uh, we can work with you to get those stood up when we're in. Excellent. Well, we'll add that to as an agenda item. Brian, did you have something quick? Brian, Innes? yeah, just a very good question. Um, so one of the things we're looking to do quite quickly is look at some of the missing operators, like the pipeline operator, like um, the OCS operator. Could we use those as like subcomponents because they're sort of self-contained and we can build them and test them on a standard cluster? Would they be good candidates to actually get something running? It will, that, that will work as long as you're not in a super hurry. So in Q4, so okay. our, our first goal was to deliver not operator controlled services. Okay. The reason is because testing operators requires you to have that automation where you can set up a brand new cluster, right? And so we're actually building that automation. We're building it in Q4 and we'll be testing it in Q4. So if you guys want to ride along okay. with us while we build it, and, and test those with it, that would be okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're we're going to be replacing some of that Prowl workflow that gets done for the OpenShift deep with um, provisioning based on HyperShift in order to save more time and avoid using hibernated clusters, which is ultra complicated. Okay, Diane, you have something real quick. 
one real quick. What I would suggest, Jamie, is that we create a like like the docs group, a subgroup of people who want to um, work on this project and put a note out to the mailing list and see if there's a center of gravity and if I have to recruit like Tecton, DevOps, open sourcey people to help us. Um, so I, real quick, that's what I would suggest we do. Just like docs have another little subgroup of people who are interested in in learning about this was thinking the exact same thing. Okay, thank you, Brian Cook. Uh, we will touch base with you in a couple of weeks and let you know where we're at with our efforts. Uh, very much appreciate you coming. Let's move on now to, did Marco show up? Uh, I don't think Marco is here. So we can skip the Ansible. Yeah, and- yeah, uh, I, I reached out to him internally. He hasn't, he hasn't gotten back, so uh, he's probably okay. not. Uh, operators, we I think we 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 know where we're at with operators, right? Is, is there anything else we need to touch on with operators? I, I think we sort of know where we're at with with that. Yes. Uh, yeah, just very quickly, uh, the uh, I, I put a, uh, a a note in the uh, operators uh, bug uh, bug list uh, because it's sort of worse than I had thought uh, when I was looking into the. Uh, uh, KDAD part, uh, there are some sort of uh, unbeknownst to me repositories that aren't in the normal chain of repositories that Red Hat uses to build some of these things. And uh, anyway, you can have a look at that uh, rather okay. than talking Brian, about Brian, is there an example in the discussion? Could you link, could you put a link to that particular message that you posted with the example in the meeting minutes under the discussion? Uh, uh, under this particular item, under this agenda item? Yeah, it, it's the main operator discussion thread, so yeah, sure. we'll if find that. If you could link to the particular link. comment so that we know uh, an example of, of because yeah. a lot of people who are listening to this hear the reference to these other repo or other registries. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 can give you an, I can give you a concrete example. So for example, so let's, the... let's put it in the meeting notes and okay. so that it's there, because I do want, we have nine okay. minutes left and we do have, okay. Uh, Jack uh, to talk a little bit. Jack actually had um, customizing OKD, how to figure out uh, source repositories for images. Jack, go ahead. Yeah, so this is definitely going to be quick, but I, I, this nicely ties into the discussion we had before, basically knowing how OKD is built as a whole thing. So because just today uh, we had this issue that uh, some of our source to image builds failed uh, due to some Git update or remote repositories that require a newer Git version, some, something along those lines, because in, in April there was this the Git CVE and um, some of those things were then also patched on the server side and other things were patched on the client side. Long story short, the, the source to image build failed due to the image or the container that is executing those steps. And uh, so uh, I, w I was asked to to basically write write this blog post about how we how we customize uh, OKD and what kind of the maybe some of the challenges are, and I would say that this surprisingly enough for an open source uh, yeah software or, or system is actually sometimes one of the hardest things, kind of figuring out which image you need to touch. So sometimes it's it's very easy. Let's say you want to change something in the console. You look at the console operator, uh, you look at the, you know exactly which image you need to touch because it's called console operator. Uh, and then you just go to the repository, which is github.com slash open shift slash console dash operator. Easy. But sometimes you also have these cases where you know, okay, well, I have this image in my cluster that does something and that is used by some component. Now I need to figure out how to, how I can even replace that image. So because what we are uh, doing is we are doing our own OKD release, uh, but we're just taking the upstream releases and then replacing some of the images. So that is with the um, OC ADM release new command, and then you can specify the images that you want to replace. Now, sometimes it's also even not trivial just what the name of the image would be. Because for example, for the cluster ingress operator, it's just cluster ingress operator. But then I have another example here that is the the uh, that is the open OpenStack machine controllers image, which is actually coming from the cluster API provider OpenStack repository or the associated image. 
And now just, just figuring out those connections is sometimes surprisingly hard. And, and we had the same now today with this source to image builder uh, image, um, where we kind of, it, it took us a while, like a, a long while, longer than it should have to figure out where this image is coming from. And in the end, we kind of had to, you know, download the image and kind of look at the, at the artifacts that are inside and based on which image it was built and maybe look at some of the metadata that is in there. And it's just, um, unfortunately very hard to sometimes to figure it out. And for example, this, uh, this source to image builder image is actually built from OpenShift slash builder, which, well, I mean, I guess if you know it, it makes sense, but you know, you, you would never look for that because you would maybe look for something like source to image or, or Docker image builder, which is actually the name of the image that you need to replace when you're doing the release. So sometimes these these kind of connections going from like I have an I have a piece I have a component that I want to change. Now I need to figure out which image I need to replace, and then I need to figure out where that image is coming from. That is sometimes very hard, and it would be great if we can kind of find a way, maybe some documentation, maybe some additional metadata, to make that a bit easier. And um, this is just kind of the the topic that I, that I wanted to bring up with. Jack, um, maybe I can help out with a little bit of that. So I'm actually trying to pull this documentation together. So on OKD.io, there's a new section called OKD Development. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm trying to pull this content. And one of the things that I found out is if you look at the OC Atom release, you can actually put a dash dash commit URLs, which shows the actual GitHub commit URL for every component included in the release. So I, I think that answers part of your question. The, well, I think the, that is already a very useful start for sure. Yeah, so how do you get from what you see on screen to the actual component responsible? I don't think we have a, an answer for that at the minute, but certainly once you identify what the image is, getting the link to the exact Git commit, you can do that. And again, if you look at that page, it's the overview of the OKD development section. I'm um, at the bottom there. There's there's actually commit URLs, commits, and pull specs. So that gives you the exact information in terms of how you identify the image um, used in a, in a specific build. Um, so hope, hopefully that can help. Yeah, that that, that is definitely that something that that does help a lot. Um, I'd maybe just if we, if we can if we can uh, as a, as a community like work work on that documentation a bit and uh, because like I said for some components it's it's literally crystal clear because everything is kind of consistently named and you can you can trace it back and of course I I kind of expect now that you know uh, we're now fi going to fix all of the let's say legacy or the weird naming things that are in there but this is just a case where I think some documentation can go a really long way because it's also not like uh, you're expecting uh, non-expert users to be able to do this. But even just for the, uh, it's, it's called as expert users, sometimes it's surprisingly hard to figure out what you need to change. Yeah, I mean, and any volunteers that wanna help create that technical documentation, um, you're very welcome to come and join in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what we're miss missing is, is the volunteers. I'm just going to reiterate that. And Jack, if there's anybody um, in your world that might have some expertise that even if they would do a talk on that, we could transcribe it to get a starting point, that would be great. Cool. This was a great conversation. I sense a theme uh, across this. So we, we know where we need to put our efforts for sure. Um, does anyone have any, we have about three minutes left, any last minute thoughts on, on other topics or this one? Brian? Yeah, Jamie, there was, there was the one that I pinged you yesterday, if I can. Yeah, go right ahead. Okay, so one of the challenges is once you've worked out what image you want, when you want to build it, um, Prow actually does a replace on the image that's in the registry. So I actually went through every image using an OKD release and believe it or not, there are 50 different images specified in repos within the Red Hat internal registry. So as someone who wants to build, you have to then work out 
um, what to replace them with because you can't build them because they're not accessible outside the, the the firewall. So, I mean, one advantage of getting to know Christian last week was I, I now feel like I can now bug him with questions. So I've been trying to get Christian to find the source of truth of what's in those images. Where's the container file? And again, it comes out there is a container file, but then there's some prow stuff that goes and changes a container file to actually work out what's actually then built that then the image uses. And this just seems to me way over complex just to try and, as I said, it's in the open, but the number of hoops you seem to have to jump through. So what I'm thinking, can we actually create a standard container file in a GitHub that OKD will use to build its images? So we want the base image and a builder image. They're the two main ones. And then we basically use those. We have the source of them. We have them built in the key.io.okd. I'm sorry, Diane, it is pronounced key. But <laughs> we have it in the repo and then we just build it. And then the community can just use those images. We don't have to go through this torturous process of actually trying to work what's in them. Yeah, I, th I think that's a good point, especially since since so many of the images that get built like have a static Go binary in them anyway. Uh, at least, I think eighty plus percent. So it's not like you need a crazy complicated base image, and that's in fact exactly what we are doing for our forked uh, images that we are replacing in in the custom OPD release because it's most of the time you don't really have a lot of requirements for the for the environment or for the base image. Yeah, I, I totally agree with what uh, with well, what has been said here. I just want to add these 50 different images are probably going to be replaced internally to just one or two different ones, because unfortunately the ROM directive in the Docker file in the Git repo isn't the canonical uh, reference. It's being replaced on the fly uh, by the Prowl build system. There is a bot that tries to update that reference in the repository, pushing opening PRs, but those are often not merged in time or just uh, you know aren't uh, aren't timely. So um, I, I do think uh, it's very valuable. And yeah, the builder image is essentially just a I think it's UBI or rel based or CentOS stream based. Uh, with Go in it, uh, with the Golang uh, binary, so it can build the binaries. Additional dependencies sometimes have to be installed there as well. And then that that binary that is built is put in a minimal container, which is the base image, which doesn't have to have anything in it. It just has to run that binary, so it, it can be very minimal. Um, I know that Mike has, and he mentioned that in the chat, there is an open version, a, a freely distributable version of the uh, builder image, which is, uh, he linked it here, the release Golang 118. But again, we, we, don't, it, we don't build that ourselves. We don't, it's very obscure where it is built because the, it's all in the OCP builds data repository on the open part, but it's still very obscure. There's different branches, and then that gets taken into our internal System, the art build system gets pushed out to Prow, is used there as a base image gets trans transformed. So it is, it is very obscure. And if we could just provide an open definition uh, for a builder image and a base image based on, let's say, CentOS Street, because that'll work everywhere, um, that is on, on FCOS and on OCP and just universally. Um, I think that would be really valuable because then in our own build pipelines, we could just use those as the as the build and base images. And and, and if there is uh, if we can kind of sync that with the internal one we have, uh, obviously that would be uh, that would be awesome. And yeah, uh, Mike, uh, the deep mysteries of the art team uh, that that seems to be a common theme because that is kind of. It's a different thing. We in Red Hat, in, in, in OpenShift, mostly deal with Pro, but then we have this other build system, Art, that actually builds our releases and also builds the base images for the CI. And we have, it's very obscure to us. If, yeah, I don't even, I wouldn't know where to check uh, for that. That's a different team. Um, yeah, ju just to add that as a little bit of context, and I realize we're already over time. Yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this up and we'll continue this discussion in two weeks and asynchronously. And it sounds like we're starting to get all of the, the players and the pieces together.
um, to tackle this issue across operators, across the builds, the cluster builds, et cetera. So um, let's carry this conversation on and we'll talk to each other uh, online and at the next meeting. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Okay.